Hello, I'm Dan Resnick and I'm a co-author of this paper we've submitted for publication on ICGG 2022 called Exploring the Steiner Saudi Porism. And my co-authors are Professor Ronaldo Garcia at University Federal de Goiás in Brazil and Liliana Georg at University Federal de Pernambuco, Brazil. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at uh, in this presentation is this orange family of polygons. So here's, a, in this case, the orange polygon is a five-gon, and its vertices are the centers of circles in a Steiner porism. Now, you're going to recall that a Steiner porism is actually the inversive image of a regular preimage. Okay, so if you consider a regular and gone in this case n equals five, and you associate with each one of its vertices a circle whose radius is half the side length. Okay, bisymmetry can obviously glide or slide or rotate this entire ball bearing and keep all the tangencies preserved, etc. So if you elect an inversion circle, this red circle here, and you consider the image of this rotating setup under the inversion, you get a sort of um, asymmetric image, but tangencies are preserved. And what we're interested in in this presentation is characteristics of the polygon, the orange polygon, which we're calling the Steiner Saudi polygon, over the porism. Now, uh, a video is worth a thousand pictures, so let's go ahead and show a video of this phenomenon, if I can. So this is a setup I was telling you guys about. So here's the, in this case, here I have a Steiner chain with five circles. And incidentally, the chain is inscribed in a fixed circle, this light blue circle here, known as the outer Saudi circle. And it circumscribes a fixed inner circle known as the inner Saudi circle. Okay, so the, the circles in the chain, they lie in the interstice between these two circles here, and they are tangent to the two circles simultaneously, and all the circles in the chain are simultaneously tangent. Now, as I said before, we're interested in this orange polygon here, whose vertices are the centers of circles in the chain. And in this video, we're going to talk about a few properties of this family of polygons. And why is it a family? Because as you glide the chain around, and this is a porism, right? Uh, the orange polygon moves. So, uh, what we're interested in is analyzing invariance about this family here. Now, you can already see that a few phenomena are happening, that the centers of the circles in the chain, they move along an ellipse, this uh, gray ellipse here. And if you define this polygon as we... Uh, uh, just uh, specified, uh, its sides are going to envelop a circle. None of these two results are obvious. You have to go through some derivations. Uh, but you get that this family here is simultaneously inscribed in a fixed conic and circumscribes a second conic or caustic, which is always a circle. Okay, now let's go back to our slide presentation. Okay. So the main results that we want to talk about in this short presentation are the fact that the orange family, which we're calling the Steiner Saudi family, uh, is Poncelitian. So we call that a Poncelet sporism uh, relates to a one-dimensional family of polygons, which is simultaneously inscribed into a conic while circumscribing a second conic. Okay, so we can we show in our paper that this is the case for the family of polygons defined by the centers of the Steiner circles. Okay, very interesting uh, observation is that the foci of this outer conic, this outer Poncelet conic, so here's one focus, and here's a second focus, they are precisely the centers of the inner Saudi and the outer Saudi circles of the chain. So I can show here F1 is the center of this circle, and F2 is the center of this outer circle here, which is only partially viewable. Okay. Now, uh, very interestingly as well, is the fact that this family of orange polygons conserves this curious quantity here. So if you, if you call its internal angles theta sub i, I'm going to be conserving the sum of tangents of the half angles. So as this family changes geometry over the porism, 
the sum of tangents of half angles is conserved. And in fact, you can actually raise the tangents to a power of m, m an integer, which lies in 1 to n minus 1. So it's going to conserve, for example, the sum of square, square tangents of the half angles, cubic tangents, uh, uh, tangents to the, the third power of the half angles, and so forth and so on. Now, I've been drawing this uh, other family here, this pink or magenta family. We're calling this family the contact family. Now, this is a known result. Uh, the fact that this contact family, what do I mean by contact? Where the blue circles touch each other, okay? You also have a polygon, okay? Now, it's you can see here that just by construction, this uh, magenta polygon is inscribed in a circle. And it will actually circumscribe an ellipse not shown here. So this family is also Poncelitian. Okay. Now, a result that we proved in a, a recent paper with uh, Pedro Reutemann uh, and Ronaldo Garcia is that this family, since it's known as a harmonic polygon family, what does harmonic mean? It's a polygon that is inscribed in a circle and circumscribes a special ellipse known as the Brocard in ellipse. But that's not germane to this uh, presentation. But uh, we use the special term harmonic. So this contact family, the magenta family, conserves the sum of powers of the cotangents of its internal angles. So we have these two neat conservations over these two Poncelitian families, which are derived from a Steiner chain. Again, you can raise the cotangent to a power of m, and m can lie between 1 and n minus 1. So let's see this in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the video. And I want to uh, point out that while we're actually running this thing, running this video, uh, I'm actually displaying up here, and it looks like this is not catching, but I'm also displaying up here the sum of the half tangents, you can see here. Um, right? Yeah, so just bear with me. Now you can see that up above, I'm actually showing the sum of cotangents to the power of k, and each one of the numbers up there refers to a specific power. So the first magenta number, minus 1.78, is the sum of cotangents to k equals 1. And then 1.205k equals 2, so the sum of square cotangents and so forth. And this relates to the internal family. Now, the outer family, the orange family, is shown over here. So you can see these numbers, the sequence of numbers here refers to the sum of the um, half tangents raised to a power of k. And you, what you're going to see in the video is that that sequence of numbers is constant except for the very last number because I'm going power of 1, power of 2, power of 3, power of 4, power of 5, right? So let me go ahead and run that. Um, perhaps I can go back to here. And I want to... Um, yeah, so let's see if I actually make that run. So you can see that the first four digits are not changing, the first four quantities are not changing, and the very last one, which is when k equals to n equals 5 in this case, it changes. Okay, very well. And this actually works for all n. So, you know, n can be 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can have any number uh, of circles in the chain, and you're going to have these two conservations. So just to recap, the SSP, the steiner soddy porism, which is the porism of the orange polygons, conserves the sum of half angle tangents raised to the power of m. m can go from 1 to n minus 1. We proved this in the paper. And we have this older um, result that the contact family, the, po the magenta polygons, will conserve the sum of cotangents of their internal angles to the power of m. m going from, going from 1 to n minus 1. Okay. Uh, so you already saw that in the video, okay? I have a degree of freedom that allows me, the Euclidean plane, to make my steiner soddy polygon, this orange polygon here, whose vertices are the centers of circles on my Steiner chain, to be, as we saw before, as we saw before, inscribed in a um, ellipse. But I have a degree of freedom that perhaps I should talk about, which is, let me go back, one picture. I was telling you guys that Steiner chain is the image of this regular setup under inversion. Okay, What I can do is I can choose the distance between 
the centroid of my regular polygon and the center of the inversion circle. I can, I can vary this. So let's say I'm going to vary this continuously uh, across the x-axis here. It turns out that if this inversion center is located in the pre-image of this circle here, so the outer solid circle on the side, its pre-image is this internal circle, okay, to the regular setup. Now it turns out that if this inversion center is placed on top of this circle here, the SSP, the steiner solid porism, is going to be inscribed in a parabola. So if the inversion center is inside this inner circle, I'm inscribed in a, an ellipse. If the inversion center is made to be right on top of it, I'm going to be inscribed in a parabola. And if the inversion circle uh, is actually uh, outside of this circle here. I'm on a hyperbola. Okay? So you transition from the outer Poncelitian conic from an ellipse to a parabola to a hyperbola. So what that picture was showing you guys is that uh, here's the inversive image, the Steiner chain. This is one situation when I'm actually now inscribed in a parabola. So you can see here that this curve here, this outer Poncelet conic, is a parabola, okay? And you get special properties in this case that we're not going to go over, but they are described in the paper. And you can see that one of the special properties is the outer Saudi circle that generates to a line, okay? It's usually a finite circle, but in this case, it goes into this infinite radius circle. Uh, likewise, you can have uh, my polygon can be inscribed into a hyperbola. Let me inscribe into a hyperbola. So you can see here that four of the vertices of this n equals five lie on one branch of the hyperbola, and the other one lies on that other branch. And you can see that the polygon, in both cases, continues to circumscribe extensions of their sides or tangent, a circle, both in this case and in this case. Okay? Very well. Uh, for lack of time, we're just going to finish the video with n equals 3 phenomena, right? So we saw an n equals 5 phenomena. It turns out that many uh, interesting things happen when n equals 3. It's a simpler subcase. But one of the things that we can talk about is what happens. So, for example, here's, uh, so what I'm showing here already is my family. So I'm not showing anymore the, the Steiner circles, individual Steiner circles, but I'm already showing the Steiner Saudi polygon for the n equals 3 case. Right, you can see here the circular caustic as we had before, and you can see that this family is inscribed in this red ellipse, partially shown, and you can see also the contact polygon here, which we saw was a family of harmonic polygons. In the n equals three case, there's a special name for that that's known as the Brocard porism. Now, what we're going to look at right here is what happens to the loci of three triangle centers. Uh, of this n equals 3 family, okay? Namely, uh, the body center using uh, uh, Kimberling's uh, notation x2 is going to describe an ellipse. What's going to happen to the uh, circumcenter also describing an ellipse? And finally, the orthocenter of this outer Steiner Saudi porism. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to open up a live demonstration of that. Here it is. So what we're seeing here is a live demonstration of what these three triangle centers do over this porism. In this particular case, a porism is inscribed in an ellipse. We can actually see the whole picture here, and we can see dynamically what's happening to uh, these three tri triangle centers. Unfortunately, we're going to be reaching our 15-minute lim limit pretty soon, so I just want to finish with... Uh, the fact that we go back to our presentation here, right? Um, uh, I want to finish with the fact that you can also continue this exploration with more triangle centers, okay? And you can, in the paper, actually talk about uh, proofs and how do you prove that some triangle center, so for example, body center, circumcenter, center, center, are conics, they're loci, and in fact, the center of the nine-point circle, another object associated with the triangle, are also conics, and you can see here other Kimberling centers and properties that we discovered experimentally. Some of them are proven, some are not. Thank you very much. Here's our emails, and we'll be glad to answer any questions.